Tana. Hello, Sam. <laughs> now that everyone knows our names. How have you been? If it's that, is that our intro? <laughs> yeah, I could be. I mean, there's no rules. I'm actually going by Tankubus now. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to Zelf on the Shelf. What's your name? <laughs> What's your name? What's your f***ing name? <laughs> Comment below. <laughs> Comment below what your name is. <laughs> Okay, update on my week. I have been consistently taking my vitamin D every day, as the, you know, the fear has been setting in. Thank you. And I made some really good soup and mulled wine at the weekend. Oh, nice. And a roast. You know how to be cozy. Yeah, I do. Oh. Speaking of cozy. Oh my goodness. Oh my God, the segue. You have the opportunity to absolutely close <laughs> out your life. You'll basically be us <laughs> if you've ever wanted. Which for some of you might be something you would want to do. Like not a chance in hell. You're like, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Our candle by Exmo Candles is officially released and it is the best smelling it's candle best. I have it ever is. smelled. It is the best and I'm candle. I'm not even just being an advertiser here. It's really good. I love it. This it was a dream that we got to do this because we basically got to connect with Exmo Candles. We already loved Exmo Candles because they, well, they've sent us their candles before and we love them. They use soy wax, they plant a tree for every candle they sell, they use zero plastic. Um, and Jen at Exmo Candles is just my favorite person ever. So they were like, what do you what do you want your candle to smell like? And we just got to tell them all of our things we did and didn't like in sense. I love that it was kind of a spontaneous question and you were ready was, to go with like a list of like your I dream know. candle situation that like you've been waiting for years for someone to ask you. That's exactly what happened. So banana nut bread and toasted coconut. It's very like warm and sweet, but it's not too sweet. You know when a candle is sickly sweet and it's mm -hmm. just, it's too much. I don't like that. It's not overpowering. It's, it's just gorgeous. It's so homey. Um, I love it. They plant a tree for every candle they sell and if you buy when it really supports us. It's just been really fun that we got to. If maybe smelling like us isn't your thing and you'd rather look like us, you have the chance to buy our <laughs> merch. Link down below on our Etsy store. We got hats, we got shirts, we got mugs. We are paying the bills this season, okay? <laughs> With your help. <laughs> Doesn't you look so good? Help us Samifest and Tanifest <laughs> being able to get by. <laughs> Real talk, I do love the bucket hats because number one, you did the graphic design for our logo. It's uh, our new updated logo. For those of you that, have, that are OG, we used to have a different logo, but we decided to evolve. I just think the graphic design is amazing. And it doesn't look overtly like a YouTuber merch product. It's just, it's, no. it's a cool design, you know? Yeah. Sorry, I don't mean to reveal your hair in case you haven't done it, but. Oh, eh, cute. Looks good on everyone. Yep, so those are the things you can buy from us right off the bat, and now we will get into this free content that we're providing you with. I didn't even get to go over my week. Oh my week. god, Tana, how was your week? How was your week? I'm so sorry. My week's been fine. It's been fine. I've been struggling at the gym because I feel like I always hit this point where my body starts hurting, like, and not in like a I'm sore, but like a <clears> ooh, my tendons actually <throat> feel strained, and then I feel like I have to stop, and then I get another habit. So I'm trying to figure out that. All right, well, All right, let's get I into am it. ready to watch some Christian TikTok. I started at the gym the other day watching some and it, my blood pressure just yeah. shot through the roof. <laughs> this homework was one of the less fun homeworks we've had of late. And we did the Mormon TikTok video, which was fine. That one wasn't too, this felt worse. I don't know about you, but the, re the research for this felt worse. Yeah. You know, when we talk about Mormon stuff, Mormons are often like, oh, you anti-Mormons, outsiders criticizing us. And I'm like, hey, listen, we're all in the family here. This is, you know, we've been a part of this. When it's with Christians, there's there's not that same familiarity. And sometimes I'm just like, oh yeah. my God. I'm like, is it the fact that we're just more familiar with Mormons so they don't feel as scary? Or is it the fact that Christians can seem scarier a lot of the time? Because I swear some of the stuff I hear Christians say, I'm like, that is a whole other level. Even a Mormon would check themselves on that, mm -hmm. you know? The Maybe one thing that Mormonism has going for it is um, they have a more realistic view of the Bible it's uh, not not a great view of the Bible, but it yeah. is a little bit more realistic in that they acknowledge at least that there are flaws in it, that it was a process um, involving lots of different editors and scribes and translations, and it's not just this like perfect uh, br word of God just breathed out in perfection. Like you talk to Christians, and it's clear that they have no concept uh, yeah. of how the Bible came to be, yeah. and then and they affirm it with such tenaciousness to justify things that are so absurd. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we're gonna dive right in mm. and watch some Christian TikToks. So we've got 14 to watch between us, so we will probably be doing, um, splitting this into two parts and doing the second part over on our Patreon, so go join us there. 
Um, if there's any Christians watching, I'm sorry for my tone. I don't hate you. I and just... there <laughs> are reasonable Christians. Oh, because, yeah. Especially because Christian, I mean, Christianity is such a wide umbrella. So yes. there's, there's so many like loving, kind, non-extreme Christians that do exist. Yes. I feel like maybe even more so than Mormonism, just because Mormonism is like newer and potentially more high demand. More homogenous there's not, still. There's not like a bunch of versions of Mormonism that are like super low demand. I guess there's like community of Christ, but that's kind mm -hmm. of it. And that's kind of what uh, really gets my goat is like Christianity has been totally. I mean, when I think of it, I think of American evangelicalism, which is, yeah, which not, is not the world tradition of Christianity. It's like, not even close to like Eastern Orthodox, which comes from a yeah. whole different split. Or okay, so are you ready I'm for ready. me to ready. Let's you the first do this. One? Oh, I hate this. Okay, we can do this. This is our job, so we are mature. This is fine. Technically, hawking candles is our job. <laughs> we do this for fun. Did you know your lack of faith and unbelief can actually hinder the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? There are so many amazing miracles, signs, and wonders that God wants to perform in your life, but commonly we stop it from happening because our unbelief and our lack of faith, our doubt, keeps these miracles from happening in our lives. There's actually a time in the Bible in Matthew 13, 58, where Jesus could not perform as many miracles in this town because of their lack of faith. My friend, do not limit and hinder the power of the Holy Spirit in your life because of your unbelief. Believe. So he blinked like three and a half times that entire video. That's yeah. just my first comment. I've actually seen in my little perusal, I found several of that where it's just like, Camera way too close to the person's yeah. face, eye contact way too intense, and they're bringing this energy to compensate for like, I don't know, I just feel like you should be able to have a discussion about things without being like, yeah. I want you to know, please brothers, believe, please, believe, 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 believe. It's like, it's just oh, that so classic awkward. like con man energy, isn't it? Of like bringing such an intense level of confidence that it like sways some people. But I'm like, I wouldn't, I w even if I was Christian, I wouldn't want to get my advice from that kind of energy. Anyone who is trying to like use overly emotional appeals to get you to believe in things that there isn't evidence for or that mm. doesn't seem just real is probably trying to con you out of something. Like who else yeah. is like faith is such a a weird concept because they, you know, they think that in order to be a Christian you have to believe all these things that may or may not be true and it's like why is that the heart of it versus like Mm -hmm. uh, taking care of the poor and needy and like no it's like know. if you don't believe there was a literal flood even though science like proves it wrong then <laughs> god doesn't like you and you might go to hell for that it's like then why did he give us christian thinking skills <laughs> nightmare also i know nothing about this guy's life but again based on the energy he's bringing to this video doesn't seem like someone who i'd want to emulate no like he seems so intense. What's the word I'm looking for? Just just on the edge, you know? His energy is giving like on the edge. Like this, I really need you to believe this because mm. like everything hinges on this for me because I am not okay. And I think some people, especially probably more young people who are more, um, I know. you know, experimenting with opening up to newer ideas and more susceptible to cult-like indoctrination ding. and things, mm -hmm. um, you can kind of read that as being like, oh, they must know something I don't because I never act this manic and intense <laughs> and passionate about things. Yeah. So. It's probably, it's probably got something going on. So. I mean, Mormon mm. missionaries do that, right? Like, I remember being like, wow, these guys are really serious, and they left their homes for two years, and they are really into this. And, oh, yeah. and as a young, vulnerable person, you're like, okay, well, I'm not that confident about anything, so <laughs> I guess they might have something to say. Uh -huh. Okay, this one is from Meredith Foster, who I did a video about once on this channel. She used to be, like, a big, like, lifestyle beauty YouTuber that I would mm -hmm. watch back in the day. Um, and then she just became a radical Christian. Like she used to just be kind of like a lukewarm Christian who grew up Christian. Mm. And then she just got radicalized at a certain point. All her family are apparently Trump supporters and she's just become like full on Christian influencer. So the way God speaks to me is through visions, dreams, pictures in my mind's eye. So yesterday I was driving in my car all the ways the psyche normally like communicates <laughs> messages back and forth with itself. How interesting. Do you remember in Mormonism where people would be like, when I feel the Holy Spirit, it's like in my back. <laughs> like they're just, <laughs> everyone feels the Holy Spirit differently. Apparently. My left ankle is where the people spirit resides. People would say shit like that though and they would say it as if it was impressive and like, It's because it's things. all so loosey-goosey, right? There's no yeah. like, you can't be like, oh, this is actually, I mean, science 
has. They've actually right. measured, done brain scans That's of people who are feeling the, the Holy Ghost. <laughs> and of course, it's the same neural circuit as every other dopamine yeah. uh, expending event or substance. Experience like, of awe and wonder. Yep. And he showed me an image of a pink ball of yarn and it was all knotted and tangled up. And he was like, daughter, this is your mind. This is like your thought life. So then I saw God and I kind of unraveling this ball of yarn. I saw all these different strings and he was like, okay, I want to come alongside of you, partner with you and help you weave and knit these beautiful scarves. God is the best seamstress. <laughs> I've always said that. Jared ain't got shit on God. I know, I was like, this is how Jared's brain would work as a Christian. So just cast your cares, cast your worries onto me, throw that ball of yarn up and just give it to him so that he can help you unravel these thoughts, all of these worries, um, because he's got you in the palm of his hand. And I just felt, that was a word for me yesterday, so I honestly think it's a word for a lot of people that follow me. But in the scripture I felt uh, so strongly because I've been studying the book of James because God has been speaking to me about double-mindedness, which goes perfectly with this uh, vision. But it's James 1, 5, if anyone lacks wisdom, let them ask God in faith without doubting. So if you lack wisdom and you need some, ask God. And we have the mind of Christ as believers. We have every spiritual blessing. Easy, just ask God. No one's ever got contradictory messages. Like <laughs> there aren't thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of different denominations of Christianity getting different ideas about everything. The answers your psyche is most likely produced are not at all influenced by all the messages you've received about what God wants you to do. You can see why people confuse their thoughts with God because if you just study, like observe the nature of thoughts, if you sit down and meditate right now, you'll find that you do not choose Use your thoughts. The brain is just circulating things all the time and processing things all the time. And even if you sit quiet and you're like, I'm not going to think anything, it'll still keep doing it. And so it's easy to be like, oh, my thoughts aren't from me. Therefore, it must be God or Satan or whatever, rather than just like something that's just happening in the brain. And then what's scary is when you attribute that to somebody else, it's very easy to conflict your impulses and your desires with this other being who wants me to do this because he talks to me and my thoughts. I was gonna say, as someone who's lived like this type of spirituality and now has a different approach, it's so much more effective to just get better at observing the mind and taking your thoughts less seriously than being mm. like, okay, any thought that is like this flavor, aka like God Christian flavor, emphasize that a lot and follow that you know what I mean it just like funnels you into this specific way of living that isn't necessary it's not like helping you it's not helping you pass through like the thoughts that are conditioned ways of thinking versus newer potentially more helpful ways of thinking it's just like entrenching you all the time in your existing ways of thinking oh, do you want to show me one yeah. why do you believe in orthodox Christianity so much the Holy Bible was written by multiple authors over the course of thousands of years. That's a selling point. <laughs> I know. I was like... With, like, this, ah. with the same consistent message. This is actually probably the number one reason that Christianity yeah. is not reliable or the Bible is not reliable as a historical text. Think about any mythology outside of Christianity. If you're Christian, think about any other mythology. The Epic of Gilgamesh. Take the oldest a uh, piece of literature, of renowned literature in existence, the Epic of Gilgamesh, that also includes a flood narrative and these great heroes created by the gods. And uh, what? how can you differentiate that as like a historical truth, like it was written down then versus a mythology? Well, you look at it and you say, well, there's a bunch of absurd things that could never happen. We well, read the Bible and you're like, well, it's the same kind of thing. And the process that the Bible went through is way worse than the Epic of Gilgamesh mm -hmm. because you have these oral histories that have been passed down <laughs> for hundreds of years. And we know that anytime you have an oral history, it changes rapidly. Just play telephone with like four friends and you'll see in four steps how a message can drastically change. Yeah. Take, uh... Didn't the... I just learned yesterday the original Ten Commandments, one of the Ten Commandments was, like, don't like, cook your goats in goat milk or something mm -hmm. random like that. Yeah, no. don't wear wool and linen together. Same That's... consistent message. I mean, what Bible are you reading? No, and there's so many contradictions in the Bible where it's like, no man hath seen uh -huh. God's face. I have seen God's <laughs> face. Uh... 
people who go down to the grave will never rise up again. It's like, oh, on the day of resurrection, like it's constantly contradicting itself. But of course, Christians don't pay attention to that or they have their way of contextualizing it, which every single denomination does in its own way. Some way of like making all the contradictions work, but it doesn't. It's just piling like contradictions anytime upon contradictions. Anytime you read a verse directly from the scriptures, they're like, that was taken out of context. It's always <laughs> out of context when you just read it directly. Yeah. Or like, I'm um, sorry, I've just been meaning to go on the spiel forever and no, always please. doing it. Just like with the gospels, for instance. These aren't eyewitness accounts. Like people are like, we have evidence of people who walked and talked with Christ and they saw the miracles. And it's like, no, you don't. You have a story that was written like 70 to 180 years after the effects by people who weren't there in other countries, in yeah. other languages writing about it. So like, you know me better than anybody else on planet Earth. Let's say in 70 years, mm -hmm. you tell that story, you tell my story to somebody, mm -hmm. and then they tell it to somebody in Armenia. And then the person in Armenia writes it down. How much are they going to get accurate? And uh, that's, you know, aside of all the political implications, you know, these things are being used to prop up certain uh, narratives for people in power to acquire yeah. power by giving <laughs> these these letters authoritative voices by saying, ooh, this is from the apostle. And it's like, it absolutely wasn't. They just said it was like 200 years later mm -hmm. as a way of being like, see, Christianity is real. The Bible just reads exactly like what it is, which is just like, it's just like kind of a time capsule that just like shows the way that people thought back then about different things. And there's things in it that are just like absolute nonsense and you're like, who cares? And then there's bits that are like, oh, that's kind of beautiful. You know, you're tapping into something real about the human experience there. It's just kind of a mishmash of like all of that. And it all feels, at no point does it ever feel any more advanced in its thinking than like they would have been back then, you right. know? Like it's all exactly what you would imagine from a mishmash of people. And again, it's not even what the ancient people believed at the time. Right. It's what right. more near ancient people believed about more ancient people. Right. There are things in the Bible or there are things that Jesus allegedly said that I'm like, yeah, I'm on board with that. But it's like, we have no, he probably didn't say that. Or yeah. like, it's just someone said it at some point and like, nice. But it's like, you can get those same messages from modern people without any of the nonsense. Right. And you can actually know the source. and. The Bi yeah. There are so many things in the Bible that just don't, do not square up with history. And any, any honest and rigorous biblical scholar will tell you that. Will be like... Yeah okay, here's these discrepancies. It's obviously that these, these weren't written by one person. They most A lot of the books weren't written by the person they're attributed to. Um, the books are taken from various people and put into one. You have things like um, Jesus's miraculous birth and the story of the taxation happening. And it's like, that never happened. They have the census records from... Uh, from the Romans at that time and that just like literally didn't happen it was made up again 200 years later mm -hmm. as a way of being like wow this story is really cool I mean even Jesus's divinity several, <clears throat> several books in the gospel I think it's only mentioned by John that he is God or, or one of them go listen to Bart Ehrman if you want to get your facts totally pristine um but it's not a consistent message. So yeah, again, there, there is no consistent biblical message. What we have is each generation of people or each phase in the story reappropriating the myths mm -hmm. of the past to fit a current agenda. And then, you know, a couple hundred years later, there's a new regime in power who's trying to use those old narratives and uh, tying in new mythology. So when people are like, oh, the Bible was always testifying of a savior, it was like, no, they weren't. Mm -hmm. They literally did not have a conception of a man named Yeshua who was going to spiritually lead them out of spiritual bondage. That didn't, didn't exist. Mm. All we have is a reimagining of the past to fit that narrative. And uh, using mythologies from other sources like Greek Heracles, which comes uh, in part from Gilgamesh and other myths. Also, it's pretty telling that with any religion, the fundamentalists are always scary and like harmful, basically. Like anytime people start following the scriptures of their religion perfectly, mm. it's usually a bad sign. You know, it usually doesn't lead to anything good because things like morality does evolve as time goes on and we learn more. So that's why like every religion is like you have founders or founding texts and then they just get reinterpreted over and over and over again and then everyone just insists that everyone else's interpretation is wrong and then the only people that are like sort of sticking to the original interpretations which even then is like questionable is like the fundamentalists and they're the people who are kind of like the worst people mm -hmm. am i wrong oh you're right and they they use it to justify things like 
homophobia, for instance, right. but you don't see them getting in a tizzy about people wearing shrimp. linen and wool to get, yeah. yeah. Ocean's it's like, oh, the, the one shrimp. law that Jesus didn't fulfill it happens to be the one about homosexuals because I, it makes me feel icky and I need to burn in hell. So that was only point one of why she believes in Orthodox Christianity so much. The stories of the righteous saints and the strength God gave them to live a simple and humble life. Example, St. Anthony who lived in this cave. <laughs> I mean, there's, there's stories throughout history of people, you know, finding strength to live simple, humble lives and do great. I'm actually not familiar with St. Anthony in the cave, but that doesn't, that doesn't necessarily feel like a good uh, basis for belief in Orthodox Christianity. I mean, no. it's just like a, sto a story that you like. These are a dime a dozen in India. Like... Yeah. <laughs> Three, the numerous unexplainable miracles witnessed by saints, martyrs, priests, monks, and people in our monasteries, churches, etc. So many have seen miracles happen firsthand in their spiritual lives. I mean, people, again, people throughout history of all faiths and no faiths have seen miracles happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, most of the records we have of people witnessing miracles are not actual eyewitness accounts. Mm -hmm. They're third-hand accounts written decades after the facts by people who weren't there. In any like logical, rational system, a miracle defying the laws of nature and the ordinary processes of reality has to be seen as the least likely explanation mm -hmm. for something. Who ate <clears throat> the cheesecake that I had sitting in the fridge? It was a miracle, it disappeared. Probably not. Mm. Like, we have to assume that that's just not how reality works. And so to even, to believe in a, you know, in this inexplicable miracle, miracle is like, eh, or excuse me, somebody's retelling of a miracle. And it's interesting that God never does, there's certain categories of miracles that uh, yeah. God will, will do. John picky, Larson points this out. Yeah, an amputee will never get healed by God. No. And if we're talking about- but the, a leper back in the day. A leper might, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Things that you could potentially recover on your own with. Yes. You know, when the doctor's yes. like, it's a one in a million chance that they recovered from this cancer. It's like, well, then you're saying statistically there are one in a million who will, regardless mm. of their faith tradition. And of course there's things like placebo effect and positive thinking and all that. Yes. Spontaneous remission is well documented in medicine. Mm -hmm. The placebo effect is a well documented, like actual thing that can heal people. It's a Christians, like all religions, have a confirmation bias where anytime they see anything positive, it's because of their faith in God, and anytime negative, it's either God, uh, you know, uh, trying them or letting them figure things out. And if that happens to other people, it's probably Satan just trying to deceive or they're lying or... You can sort of understand why religions like, you know, evangelical American Christianity, like, lend themselves to racism. Because if you fully sort of opened your minds and hearts to other cultures and, you know, like the beliefs of other races, for example, like, mm. I mean, you mentioned India for having like, such a rich tradition... Like there's so people people experience this stuff all the time, but it's like you need to close yourself off to that stuff to mm. be able to maintain the belief that you're you're you experiencing something uniquely spiritual and miraculous. Mm -hmm. But it's like if you open your mind for ten seconds and like actually examine other people's ways of living. But it's a lot easier for just like the people in power to tell you to just like demonize those people. Don't go there. Mm -hmm. Their ways are of the devil. Yep. Don't you know? It's just like how it's a lot easier for them to say don't go to therapy because it's the church of the devil mm -hmm. than to have to reckon with that. Four, I've seen the goodness and love in the heart of faithful believers. I mean, we've all seen goodness and love in all kinds of people, right? Christian, non-Christian, all kinds. And non-people. Compassion is wired into mammalian and animalistic <clears throat> genetics. Mm -hmm. Like, animals evolve by, or have a strategy in evolution, has been collaboration. Caring for, like, the young. Yep. And you can see, yeah, you can see animals uh, protecting animals of other species or mm -hmm. sharing resources. It's Again, not even a just lot a human easier to thing. just believe that you have dominion over animals and <laughs> never have to examine that. Yeah, and it's like, how many other congregations and lifestyles have you attended and witnessed? Yeah, probably none. You were probably born into Christian and just kind of assumed that that's the only way that things fly. Oh, this one is.
That has got to be my absolute least favorite, most off-putting style of TikTok. That Absolutely, I'm with. and the caption was "The end times are here." So originally, no. I was like, is, she, "Is does she have terminal cancer? Like, is she dying?" Because you know, the, the energy of the video is like so soon. No, nope, just you know, the apocalypse is coming, bringing it about. Also, um, it's sad because this is a young woman. You know, this isn't someone who's like lived a life. I mean, she probably has gone through stuff in her life, but you know what I mean? To have a young person be like so excited to escape the only life they're ever gonna have, probably, <sighs> is just really sad. The performative emotion. I know. I <laughs> can't handle it. We, you know, a few years ago, we were like, we need to be more open about mental health. We need to be, uh, you know, expressed. It's gone too far. It has gone too far. I don't want to be a dick. Like, I think yeah, yeah. there are times and <laughs> there are occasions where people will post themselves crying where I'm like, okay, I see what you're doing. It's not my vibe. It might resonate with others. I have cried on camera. It's, I'm not against crying on camera, but I'm just like, to, to pop out the, the ring light. <laughs> I mean, that seems like the most obvious issue with this clip. <laughs> to get the ring like, light I'm out. I'm just going to think about Jesus till I get teary yeah. eyed and then. Yeah. Also, the end times. I know. Oh, it's going to be in a, in a time with wars and rumors of wars and pestilences and sicknesses. And it's like, that's literally every time in human history. Can you name a time when there were no wars, when there were no rumors of wars, when there were no pestilences or earthquakes or floods or famines? It's never happened. So what they're saying is, look for things as they'll always be, and that's a sign that the end times are going to come. It's been 2,000 years. When will you just accept that you got ghosted? He's never coming back. I know. The followers in the Bible, you can. there's so many scriptures that are like, Jesus is like, many will not taste death before the Son of Man comes back. And everyone's like, hey, he's coming back in our life. Like, they literally all thought that. John the Revelator thought that. There's so many scriptures talking about how he's going to come back any day now and then 2,000 years later Christians are still like get my ring light on he's coming back I can tell <laughs> I knew you'd like that one we are now gonna learn three truths of a born-again Christian life doesn't get any easier with God it only gets harder as our eyes are now open to the evil of the world you're more alienated from the world. You distrust the world more. You see more of the bad in the world rather than the good, which I would argue is not an ideal way to live. I think for me, as I've grown spiritually or, you know, just grown as a human, grown up, matured, it's like you see the good and the bad more. I feel like if you're only seeing more and more bad, then like someone's co-opting your mind yeah. for, 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 their, for gain, you know, like people in power because there is a lot of good. Like you can see more good and more bad if you open your eyes. Yeah, growth is the ability to uh, reckon and hold complexity yeah. and paradox. And I mean, this is just negativity bias. <laughs> okay, so second truth. You find yourself alone quite often. Old friendships and family members start to grow sour as your views rub people the wrong way. It's a lonely journey. So far, both of these just feel so sad because... I mean, she's a born... I don't know whether she grew up Christian or not, but I'm like, if, if your views are rubbing people the wrong way, then you're probably being quite loud about them and, and probably, like, disrespect... Like, most people don't mind <laughs> if you even have, like, quite crazy views, as long as you don't sort of put them on them. As long as you and your youth group aren't standing up on an airplane and singing worship songs. <laughs> <laughs> Did that happen? Yeah. Oh, God, no, no. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm like, it sounds like you're, so you're feeling alienated from the world, you're becoming alienated from the people in your life, like so far that's not giving health and it's giving cult, you know? Uh, what, it, what does the Bible say? This is true religion undefiled, that you visit the homeless and feed the hungry, clothe the naked... It's yeah. like no one's complain no one will complain if you actually live that gospel mm -hmm. if you're doing what Jesus actually taught which is resist not evil but turn the other cheek and uh, give to them that ask of you and if someone compels you to go a mile go too like no one is going to complain about that unless you've scrapped that whole thing the yeah. actual heart of Christianity and are making you Th know. this tells me you're more in us versus them thinking than like when I've had spiritual experiences in my life that feel like I have this influx of love and it, it it makes me want to extend myself more to people to to build bridges more like it doesn't make me want to go out there and like try and convert everyone to my beliefs and rub them the wrong way and tell them why they're wrong it makes me want to be like let me meet you where you're at let me be curious about who you are let mm. me you know this more space just, more universalizing yeah and I, I just don't if I think if she was filled with 
more of the love that you know Christians claim that Jesus and Christian God is all about. I, I don't know why it would need to make you lonely because that isn't what is love. It's like a connecting energy. It's not a dividing energy. Three, God's presence daily. You feel guilty and ashamed for things you didn't before. It's your spirit warning you that your actions will hurt you later. So just scrupulosity. <laughs> if you're not feeling skill. guilt all the time, you're not doing it right. Isn't that so sad though? The idea that you're, you know, that that last girl was talking about how like when you're, bo I, when you're reborn in Christ or whatever that yeah you before you were dead and now you're alive. But it's like, but you're you you hate the world. You're disconnected from the people in your life and you feel like shit all the time. Like that's your idea of life. Yep. That's no way of living. How can you claim that that is life and the way before was death? Mm -hmm. I, um, as a kid, I was really into magic, like illusions. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's gasping. And it, it's very insight. Like that process has affected me because it was like, oh, it's very easy to see something be like and take it as face value when there's a whole other mechanism going on. And every time I see the religious magic trick going on. I'm like, wow, people just don't see the illusion, mm -hmm. which is doing something here while there's this whole sleight of hand going on in the back. And the sleight of hand here is, is like, oh, I feel so guilty, but then I feel so much love. And it's like, yes, this is what religions do. They create a, an enormous amount of psychological tension, mm -hmm. of guilt, of othering, and then provide you an outlet for releasing it's that like tension. It's like you don't need nicotine before you get a nicotine yes. addiction. So is the nicotine giving you any relief? No, the nicotine companies have just sold you the problem and the solution. Yes, exactly. That's how religion operates. Yeah, it's sad and it all just feels like classic like becoming born becoming a born again christian just makes you psychologically unhealthy mm -hmm. is, is the gist of this but in their minds that's noble and virtuous but sad 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 it's not a good um it's not selling it well is it no do you want to know why i believe in god because all of creation testifies to his creativity and design the beautiful which one? Which God? You could say that like you could just, so you believe in a creator being behind all of this. Yes, Vishnu. <laughs> also, I love like uh, I saw a post the other day that was like it. Uh, maybe I've mentioned this recently, but there was like a family of birds, and it was like, wow, everything testifies of God's plan for families. And it's like those birds are polyamorous, and they've been known to eat their young. Like, what are you talking about? Like. Anytime people are like, I, mean, I look at nature fair. and I see like God's hand and I'm like, have you ever really looked at nature? You look at eels and you're like, God's love is perfect. To be fair, God in the Bible <laughs> seems all right with rape and rape is pretty prevalent in the animal kingdom. So yeah, yeah. you could make a lot of connections there. We're like, it's you almost know. as if we're animals and maybe that's why there's so many similarities a lot of the time. The parasites that eat out children's eyes, like God is so good. The beautiful intertwining of complexity and simplicity. It's like a great- Oh, this is like my least favorite type of Christian. <laughs> <laughs> the one that is like educated enough to talk in a way that kind of has the illusion of elegance. Mm. <sighs> Sorry. Symphony that gives us a glimpse into the mind of the composer. I believe in God because I have a conscience that tells me right from wrong. This is, again, this is not why you believe in God, but mm. it's not answering the question because it's like, I also appreciate the beautiful complexity and simplicity of everything and as above, so below and the, you know, the patterns in my eyeball or the patterns of the universe. Like that's mm. cool for all of us. Yes. It's uh, all the appeals, most of the appeals that I read about like the evidence of God are like completely negligible. Like that would still occur without God. Yeah. It's like the thing <laughs> we always make fun of of like, how do I know God's real? Stare into the eyes of a newborn baby. <laughs> like, yeah, okay. God has instilled this into each one of us and they're not just arbitrary rules, but they're based on his character and nature. They um, are very much arbitrary <laughs> rules. Are you fucking kidding me? Don't wear like certain silks or whatever, or like don't eat shellfish. Maybe the shellfish was good for food poisoning back mm. then, to be fair. Again, with the explanation without God is that compassion is a survival strategy, that uh, com communal animals do well mm -hmm. by looking out for each we other. We are wired to feel good. That's why if someone asks you to do something for them and you don't really like them that much, if your brain if it does, if it chooses to do the thing, will tell you that it likes the person more than it does, and that's why you're doing the thing for them. Like, there's so many. The mechanisms. Ben Franklin effect. Is it the Ben Franklin effect? Yep. 
Yeah. Um, but there's so many things like that that clearly had like an evolutionary purpose, you know, that, that makes sense because it would like strengthen social bonds among communities. And I bet this person hasn't looked at all the creepy ass critters in the ocean. <laughs> That's the mind of God fucked up. Okay, yeah. I want no part of him. <laughs> what was God doing that day? <laughs> I believe in God because something can't come from nothing. Because his word, the Bible testifies about him. Because <laughs> I believe in God because there's a book that says he's true. We'll just... The extension cord plugged into itself. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, the Upanishads, the uh, the Bhagavad Gita testifies of the Hindu deities. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the Hindu Clearly deities are real. There's complexity down. and beauty. Therefore, the Hindu gods must be real. It's like none of these are actual reasons. It's like we're all living the same life. So whatever God you believe in, you can be like the simplicity, the complexity. God must be real. Yeah, we're also, having so much fun here. Isn't that evidence? <laughs> none of us know that much about physics. <laughs> but... <laughs> I'm pretty sure that even like physicists, they, it's not that something came from nothing. It's that the forms that we now experience have come from previous forms. So even if everything came from the Big Bang, like those were all the particles and the things were actually all held tightly. And maybe there was, you know, a different universe in the multiverse that opened up a black hole into this, you know, it's like nobody actually knows. And that isn't an evidence of God. Yeah, physicists sound off in the comments, please. <laughs> if nothing can come from nothing, where did God come from? So it's just and as likely just to say <laughs> that the elements that have, that uh, compose the universe has have existed indefinitely as to say that God has existed indefinitely. Yeah, like, ju yes, exactly. Really well said. And just because we, I'm, I'm, I, again, I'm a dumbass, so I know nothing, I don't know about physics, but I'm pretty confident that like, just because we as like individual dumbasses don't know the best current explanation, which is probably still not like getting close to the truth. The truth mm -hmm. is probably so unfathomable that our little like 3D brains can't even like compute it. You know, mm -hmm. it's like trying to teach a 2D object, a 3D reality, like how would you do that? That doesn't mean that like, it means, oh, well it must have been a man in the sky. Like, there's <laughs> infinite explanations that, that like seem more reasonable than that to me at this point. Therefore, Mesopotamian deity, <laughs> Yahweh. Therefore, because <laughs> he took on human flesh to live the life that we could not live and died the death because his dad was like this is the only way the, again the, also uh, people die for people all the time i believe in god because an old story says so it's mm -hmm. like again mm -hmm. just because someone wrote it because down because rapunzel's hair grew so thick that she could literally <laughs> climb out of the tower with it such were the strength of the amino acids in her hair proteins. I know Gilgamesh is real because there is a book about him and he did befriend Enkidu, he did. <laughs> that we deserve to die for our sins against him. Because even while I was rebelling against him, he died for me because he transformed my heart. Don't do the voice. Person, and he can do that for you too. Repent and trust in him. My gripe with 99% of Christians, including Mormons, who always talk about the transformative power of Jesus Christ, and I, I'm always like, what were you before you were an outspoken Christian? A slightly less outspoken Christian? Like, that's usually what it is. It was like, I used to not pray as much, and then Jesus totally transformed me, and I'm at church every week waving my hand. Like, it's like, and that's not a... Ah. You can get, like, a sense of meaning and purpose that feels, like, enlivening from all kinds of dysfunctional things. You can get fucking bulimia and have it feel like something, like, <laughs> finally something to focus on. It doesn't mean shit. Like, that, it's very powerful having a narrative around, like, why your life is meaningful and purposeful. Like, when I went vegan, I felt like a big, like, surge because I was, you know, grappling with post-religious nihilism. And going vegan was like this big experience of like, oh, I feel like so much more like purpose and like mm. love and I feel more driven and it felt like I was contributing to something worthwhile and that felt really good. It's, it's an like identity it's stabilizer. Exactly. Yeah. Great way of phrasing it. But yeah, you, all kinds of things can do that. That doesn't mean they're inherently true or good. And I have another TikTok in here from someone whose life apparently did do like a 180. She was drinking all the time, partying all the time, having casual sex with people who didn't care about her. And she's like, Jesus totally transformed me. And I was like, was it Jesus? Was or it was it a community of people? Was it doing those things that were harmful to you? Yes, and I went off in the comments. I can't help myself sometimes. I just, sorry. And then I'm like, why am I debating people in the comment sections? I have to get out of here. But, um... You know, someone was like, see, this is, you know, 
relig- uh, studies have shown that religious affiliation can actually improve uh, lifestyle, mental health, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, but that is true across all religions because having a community of, a supportive community with like-minded people is good for you. It's good for you. So it doesn't matter if it's Christian or if it's Buddhist or if it's uh, the satanic temple. Like if you've got friends who share your ideals and are trying to live up to some standard, that's gonna be good for you. Anyway, become part of our supportive community by buying our merch and being radically transformed by the acquisition of a. Also, according to that other, and plant tree, according to that other girl, you get more alienated from other people. Also, do Christians know that, like, if you stop drinking and having meaningless, unsatisfying sex and just generally living a lifestyle that is like harming your body and mind, like, do they know that people are capable of? like changing their lives without Jesus. Like if you just stop doing those things, you're gonna be healthier, you're gonna be happier, you're gonna be like probably a more well-rounded individual. All I had to do to drink less was listen to the Andrew Huberman podcast, but you don't see me walking around being like, Huberman is the savior. Do you know what I mean though? It's like they're always like, Christ transformed me because before I was doing all these different things. I want to hear from someone who's like, Christ transformed me. My lifestyle habits didn't really change. It's like literally just the fact that it was, it's like, we need to, we need to isolate the variable here because just stopping drinking and partying is probably going to make a lot of people's lives better. Mm -hmm. Like obviously doing things that are harmful for your body and brain. I mean, not that I'm anti-partying and drinking, but you know what I mean? If you're doing it in the way that it seems like a lot of these people do it, where it's very much like a reaction to, you know, the conservative way they were raised and Mm -hmm. yeah, self-destructive. And also doing it with the pre-established mindset that it's wrong and it's anti-Christian and, you know, you have been raised Christian and so you just think you're bad for doing it. Mm -hmm. It's not the same as like having some mulled wine with friends of an evening, you know, it's like a different energy that you're bringing to the whole experience. And again, I know we've already touched on this, but the whole psychological tension thing within community is very powerful. Like you, if you just associate with Buddhists, you're going to, you're going to see a great, a surge in your mental health. Any, any community, it could be a knitting community or a writing uh-huh. community or a roller derby community. Like being around people who share a common goal or activity is good. But there is a thing about communities that are united in radical belief systems and the psychological tension that comes from believing that you have a superior view, that you are privy to some higher information and that you have this task of bettering the world that is hanging by a thread over the pit of hell. And like that is a, a fucking sinner rush. And every, every day you need to be repenting because you're such a piece of shit and God's constantly trying to make you feel guilt and shame as a way of teaching you. Yeah, that is, that's a horrible feeling, there but then you do ways. get like such a rush from it. And like, that's why there are so many cults in the world. They thrive on that kind of thing. I felt that as a Mormon missionary. I was like, oh my God, I have to do this, but I feel so horrible because I'm so bad at everything. Mm -hmm. Because we like to live within boxes because the world is too big and scary and full of possibilities. And like humans don't like that. Humans prefer to have less options because Mm -hmm. we get decision fatigue. So I think it's just, it can be nice to be in a sort of a, a blueprint for life. And like, if people are telling you, if you just follow this, you'll be, you'll be good. Then when you do those things, you're like, okay, I'm doing it. I'm done. You're not overwhelmed anymore as opposed to like the whole world being available to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I joined Mormonism for the sense of community and belonging and purpose. Even though that's not why you would have said you joined Mormonism. No one ever thinks it. They they always think it's about the doctrines, but Mm -hmm. it really is irrelevant because otherwise we wouldn't see the same psychological mechanisms at play with every single high demand religion cult. All right. Another one. For $20, could you tell me one Bible verse? No. This one's not that interesting. It's basically just him going up to people in Walmart saying for twenty dollars, can you say, say a Bible verse and none of them can do it? Oh. And then the music is really emotional and it's like, wow, how far we have strayed. And it's like, can you name one verse from the Quran? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Here's what the scripture says: He that finds a wife finds a good thing. Didn't say he that finds a girl that he's attracted to, who he then begins to date, who he then calls his girlfriend, who he then buys a ring, proposes and makes her his fiance, who he then marries later, who becomes his wife. You're not a wife when I marry you, you're a wife when I find you. What? <laughs> yeah, what? so the message there is that like dating and getting engaged and then getting married is like, that's wrong. It's like... It, us men just what need to go up to women and be like wife (laughs) i found you you're not a wife when i marry you you're a wife when i find you i mean i think the message is like you need to act like a wife before you're even a wife but i'm like what do they are they against dating in these this christian community seems like a huge extrapolation of a verse (laughs) (laughs) it doesn't say this it's like there's a lot of things it doesn't say it doesn't jesus is she's posting that like yeah yeah she yeah she's just like "Mm, mm." 
preach. What? She looks amazing, but... You become my wife when I marry you. But a wife is not the presence of a ring, it's the presence of your character. Wife style. Are you living the wife style? <laughs> presence of the ring it's the presence of the, your character then why does it matter if gay people can get married and tra you know this like they're so in the courts about what can be classed as marriage but according to you it's not about the ring it's about your character this is just word sal salad yeah. scripture parsing it's like this is much ado about nothing i don't think paul was trying to make that a point and then this young girl is absorbing it all and it's just like some creepy old preacher dude saying it too many women want to be married, but you're walking in the spirit of girlfriend. Ask the Lord to deliver you from that spirit and carry yourself like you're already taken. And I promise you, when you carry yourself like a wife, a husband will find you. But if you keep walking like a girlfriend, boys will play. My goal is to continue walking in the spirit of a girlfriend forever, <laughs> having seen that. You know, I know what it's like to be young and longing for love and encasing that longing in a whole whole huge theological <laughs> to packaging why it's just not quite happening for you yeah yeah oh. that one was uh that one was mad so it's like <laughs> girls don't be too like fun or playful or young just kind of be <laughs> so composed like a woman who carrying herself like a wife i assume to evangelical christians is like don't be flirty don't be too hot just be kind of demure and submissive to men that Probably is a big part of it, right? Mm -hmm. Don't wear, uh, don't go mincing and tinkling as you go, nope. uh, as the Bible recommends. Signs you're getting close to Jesus. <laughs> yeah, so all of this... I think of him randomly in the day. Am I getting closer to Jesus? This is like, this guy needs a boyfriend. <laughs> I, I just want a guy who I can think of randomly through the day. Sounds like just being an introvert, you miss time alone. <laughs> <laughs> miss talking to... What do you mean you miss like, talking to Like, I think you just him? love praying so much. Uh -huh, and would... like, Christians love to do... And Mormons do this as well, to like act like their prayers are so like oh me and god we had funny back and forth banter and it's like no bitch you did not have funny back and forth banter with god like it's in your head <laughs> it's like i can see inside like a god brain like chatting the other day you've got the pup these sock puppets of like here's my voice <laughs> and this is jesus's voice and it's like i miss you oh, i love you so much but oh, elmo's dear. playing both the characters <laughs> Again, all of these could apply to a boyfriend. Yeah, or just literally anything. <laughs> like, signs you're interested in something. You think about it. You <laughs> like it. <laughs> you like talking to other people about it. Oh, you're psychologically dependent on the chemical release you get from worship because it's stripped you of all other sources of it in your life. I have never been a fan of lip syncing and I am <laughs> TikTok has absolutely pushed me the, over the edge that. of mm -hmm. tolerability. Sorry to everyone who makes a career out of it. We're gonna do the rest of these over on Patreon now, so if you're interested in keeping this evangelical TikTok party going, go over there. You can pledge any amount and you get access to all our videos, so. But the ones who pledge more, obviously, get more blessings. More blessings. <laughs> Just notice this week, the difference is, after you've pledged $10 to joining our Patreon, you're gonna you're gonna feel something that you've never felt before a kinship. You're with gonna community. randomly think about us in the day. You're gonna want to worship. I mean, uh, praise us in the comment section. And you're gonna miss. You're gonna miss talking you're to us. You're gonna miss us. I, I guarantee it. <laughs> I have a question for you because we always get comments from Christians on our videos like, "Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater just because Mormonism sucked doesn't mean that Christ isn't reigning supreme." The so question I have for ex Mormons that I would love to hear your answers to in the comments is. What was it that made you decide to not be a Christian after you left Mormonism? Like what? Because I think we get those comments, people just assume that we just haven't even considered mm -hmm. that, you know, maybe we should be Christian. You know, I think it's like pretty natural when you lose belief in Mormonism to be like, okay, what about the sort of underlying thing, which is Jesus? Like, do we keep that? Do we mm -hmm. keep... So I'd be curious to hear from all of you you know, why you're not a Christian. Can I share mine? Yes, please. Well, you know, people think, oh, you discovered that Joseph Smith told a bunch of lies and the things that he claimed didn't actually happen. 
So yeah, Mormonism is a loss, but you've thrown everything out and now you can't deal with Jesus. And it's like, no, actually that process of deconstructing Mormonism gave me critical thinking tools that when applied to the Bible, completely deconstruct that paradigm as well. Like all I've said about the historicity of the Bible, and that isn't even beginning. You can go over to my video I did a couple years ago. We'll post it in the link as well, which is why I don't believe the Bible. Um, the story of Moses, the story of the flood. There's so many things that just like historically did not happen. And the, and the same is true for the Gospels. And so when you apply those critical thinking tools the same way that you apply to Mormonism, if you apply that to Christianity, it all falls apart. Yeah, it feels like an extension of sort of like the lazy learner narrative in Mormonism that so many people who become Christian after leaving Mormonism seem to think that the rest of us just didn't even consider that as an mm. option when like of course you're going to deconstruct the Jesus piece of your faith as well and mm. the Christian part. I think it's, yeah, somewhat rare for people to just not even consider it and if they do it's probably because the reasons you just said like they sort of intuitively know already that it doesn't meet the, the standard of the burden of proof. Yeah, so I would love to hear your answers because I'm assuming most of you are similar to us and you didn't just blindly throw the baby out with the bathwater, you went through a conscious process of deconstruction. So. All right, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next time on Zelf on the Show. And on Patreon in five minutes or like now, if you're ready. We're doing it now. <laughs>